Whoever created mankind must have known what he was doing when he let us evolve rather than finish us in one stroke. He neither created us as a frozen version nor mass-produced us as copies, much like today's software packaging. The idea of not being born fully grown is also interesting. Our shape and size throw us into the uncivilized animal kingdom. It is the combination of nature and time that gives us the chance to fully develop into human beings. And like humans, Robocom will be led to evolve and grow. She will evolve to become efficient in her interaction with her users. In using Robocom, a user will also train the computer to do what he does. The passing of skill is now from people to computers, instead of people to people. This is deemed a better investment since man's mental capacity is limited, but the computer's is not. Robocom will grow by learning how to think in her own special way, straightforward and systematic, incremental and cumulative. Robocom will become the intelligence of the computer. High priests of man's intellectual pursuits, however, would argue that man represents the pinnacle of intelligence. But since the time we first realized we could think, our intelligence has hardly advanced. Why in the short period of time since the computer has come into existence, its intelligence has grown at such a pace that it defies comparison with any other phenomenon in recorded history. We have built things that are much stronger than us. Why can't we build things that are much smarter? But for those who still insist that the computer cannot become smarter than us because we created it, Robocom on behalf of the computer would like to point out that inasmuch as humans will never build a perfect machine, the computer will one day build perfect living things. Another stalwart guardian of the sacredhood of human intelligence is technology, but the super dumb yet all-powerful approach to the computer's problem-solving ability is causing some serious doubts in man's final frontier of religion, that is technology. Technology, the sweet opium to the faithfuls, has left the rest of us in a state of bewilderment and mistrust. Those in the know continue to build an ever higher fence. Those that don't know are increasingly living in fear of remaining permanent bystanders. In each and every step of our brief journey on Earth, shouldn't we all get a chance to enjoy the scenery that is the miracle of nature and that has thus far been claimed by technology as its alone? Is it possible to break up this monopoly and turn technical knowledge into common sense? How much does it take to explain to a housewife where nuclear energy comes from? If she could understand it like nuclear engineers do, then like them she would surely consider it as a gift of nature. She would ideally go one step further and insist that we stop building atomic bombs and start to use nuclear energy to help slow down the depletion of petroleum resources that is vital to maintaining an industrial society for future generations. Can this really be done? Or are we just stretching the concept of universal education a bit too far? Well, the answer coincides with the subject matter of this video. Let us first look at what Robocom does. Then we'll show how we can help Robocom develop. What Robocom does is simply allow the user to state and record what he is doing while he is doing it. Robocom allows him to clearly show not only what he does, but also how he does it. Robocom then makes what is recorded replayable, so that we can tell whether the computer has also learned how to do it. What does this all mean? It means that everyone will be building knowledge and skills inside the computer for others to use. And conversely, a user will eventually expect the computer to possess all the knowledge and skills he needs that others would have already put into the computer for him. What we really end up with is a shared understanding of how everything works. Making a human smart only benefits one. Making a computer smart benefits many. Making Robocom smart benefits us all.